Hey guys, what's going on? It's Tyler from Nelly Security, and today we are going to be taking a very brief look at the Hanwha web interface. If you're at all interested in our Hanwha A-Series cameras that just dropped a few weeks ago, then this video is really going to show you what you can expect to get out of a Hanwha experience. Now, uh, a quick disclaimer. I did mean for this video to be very brief, but if you know me, if you're used to our videos in the past, you know I could just drone on about this stuff forever, so I actually have two versions of this video. The version that you're watching now is a very brief overview. I also have a much more in-depth walkthrough of the whole interface, both for Hanwha A-Series cameras and a brief look at the Hanwha A-Series in the R web interface as well. If you're interested in that, I will leave that linked down in the description below. But if all you're looking for is a very quick, high level overview of the web interface, this is the video for you. So let's go ahead and jump right in. So here is our web interface. I'm currently in the Edge browser. You can run this web interface in most modern browsers, whether you use Edge, Chrome, Firefox. So to find the IP address, you use the WiseNet device manager. I'm just going to search for the IP addresses of Hanwha devices on my network. You can filter it based on the specific device that you're looking for. And that's how I got my IP addresses. I've got uh, one here for my IP camera. It's brand new out of the box, so we need to set a password. So I'm gonna go ahead and punch that in and click apply. And it instantly logs me into this camera here with this new password. Now, before we jump in and take a look around, I do want to emphasize that this is the web interface for the A-Series product line. If you have another Hanwha product line, maybe with a lot more advanced features, this might look a little bit different. This is the live view. It looks pretty standard. Uh, it's very clean, very uh, modern looking. This isn't what I'm used to seeing with these security camera manufacturers. Uh, the, the UI, the web interfaces are never really that pretty. They're just very functional. This one, I like the way this looks. It is functional, but it also looks great. As you might expect, we can come down here and we can capture an image and it'll save it to an image file. We can open it up right here. It saves it directly to our downloads folder, which is nice. Uh, we can start a recording, see what happens when we stop it. Looks like, yeah, that also saves it directly to our downloads folder or you know, wherever you have your browser set up to save downloads. Uh, that saves you an extra step of having to go into the configuration and set up what folder you want your downloads to go to. Just, it's uh, very streamlined. get that. Could you try again? Did I say A-Series again? We also have a pixel counter, which is a really cool tool to have. Uh, so I can click and drag to see how many pixels are in the screen. Uh, and if we want to get rid of that box, we can just click that icon one more time. We have this information overlay panel, which tells us uh, the profiles. We're gonna talk more about video profiles in a little bit, but this is essentially your different streams. And it's gonna show you how many users are currently interacting with that stream. And then down here, we have our current user. We can see the connection status down here. We can also see what IP address the users are viewing the live stream from. Really helpful stuff right here. Uh, we can, of course, make this uh, different aspect ratios. Uh, I like to keep it there so it's not stretched, it's not zoomed in. We can adjust some very basic video settings right here from the live stream. We can change the profile without leaving the live view. We can adjust the display brightness, sharpness, color level. All really handy tools to have right here at your disposal. Again, so you don't have to jump into the uh, configuration settings all that much. You can do a lot of stuff right here from the live screen, which I love to see. Uh, we can also make this full screen. Uh, let's move on to playback. There's not a micro SD card in this camera. If there was a micro SD card, we could view playback here. It looks exactly how you'd expect. We can filter by events. We can change the time. We can export clips. And that is pretty much the, the uh, playback screen. We don't need to spend much time here. Now let's jump into configuration. We have a basic tab, video and audio. We have network, event, analytics, and systems. Again, pretty stripped back and basic stuff. We don't see a whole lot of tabs over here. So under the basic tab, 
most of this is pretty self-explanatory, so the only thing I'm gonna talk about here is video profile. If you're used to Uniview, if you're used to our series, pretty much any other security camera line that we sell here, you are used to having multiple streams. Usually your mainstream and your substream. Sometimes you've got a mobile stream. With Hanwha A series cameras, there are no strict uh, streams like this. Instead, what we have is video profiles, and these are all fully 100% customizable. It comes already loaded with four video profiles here. Uh, the only one that you can delete here is mobile, and I'll, I'll just go ahead and do that so we can create this from scratch. The other three cannot be deleted, but you can add more video profiles to really customize your streams and your clients' streams in a way that is fully set up just for their unique situation. Video and audio, again, this is all pretty standard. Uh, we have hallway view, mirror view, flip, we can enable privacy areas here if we need to uh, cover something up. Let's come into camera setup, and here we have uh, more image-related settings. We can uh, adjust the sensor mode from 25 to 30. We can uh, set up presets here, which uh, you have two user-defined presets that you can adjust these however you need to, and then you have all these other presets that they provide you here. We can change. SSDR, white balance, backlight, exposure, day night settings, uh, special settings. We can adjust the on screen display. For instance, if we want to enable the camera title, let's add this camera. Uh, we can enable date and time. And there we go. Now we can preview that to see the name up there. We've got a smart codec here, which is basically a area of focus or a region of interest, I should say. And we've got the Y stream, which is gonna be a lot like uh, if you're used to Uniview's Unicode. Uh, Hike Vision has something like this. Y stream, you can set it to low, medium, or high, and this is going to save recording space. It's gonna save bandwidth. You can have lower bit rates, but still maintain the high quality video. Network, nothing new here that you haven't seen before. All of these network settings that honestly go over my head. Click around here, see what there is to explore. Next, we've got event settings. For instance, you have all of these different triggers. So you can do this either right here from this event setup view for a high overview of what's going on, or you can set these same uh, triggers and events from the menus themselves. If I click here and go back into the uh, IVA setup, I can uncheck email. Then if I come back into my event setup, it's unchecked. So again, this gives you a high level overview of what's going on with all of your events. If something accidentally gets checked while you're in here messing with different settings, uh, you can come back here later and you can see that and you can fix it really easily without having to dive any deeper into the menu system. Have I mentioned that I love the Hanwha web interface? This is amazing. Now there is uh, there's one more menu that we need to cover here and that is system. It's very straightforward. We have your product information. Uh, you can actually change some of this stuff, change your device name, change the location of the camera. You can give it a description, add a memo in here. This is all really cool stuff that you can do. And of course you got your serial number and your model number there. And we can of course upgrade your firmware, factory default everything, restart your camera, and there is your event log, just telling you everything that has happened on your camera. One quick thing I wanna mention about this upgrade uh, of your software, you can do this right here from the web interface. This works if you have a standalone camera or maybe you have this set up through Onvif on uh, a third party NVR. But uh, most of the time, if you have a Hanwha camera, you probably have this set up with a Hanwha system. So I would recommend if you have the opportunity to just upgrade this through the NVR and not through the individual camera. Really, these individual cameras are set up to be used in a system. They really don't work well as standalone cameras simply because they don't have cloud functionality. Uh, you see there's no network, there's no option here in the network for cloud functionality. Uh, that you, you can't add this to you know, your WiseNet app through the cloud. You can't uh, upgrade the firmware through the cloud. You have to have the files on your computer to upload into the system. But if you go through your NVR, you know, you, you'll have cloud access. You can add your NVR to your WiseNet app. You can upgrade your NVR and your camera firmware through the, uh, through the cloud. 
So it's much more streamlined, much easier to just handle all of this from the NVR itself and not from the individual camera. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you enjoyed it, please be sure to give it a like. Follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel. We have a thriving community of security professionals and security tech enthusiasts. And we love connecting with you. We love sharing content with you. So check out our contact information down below if you have any questions at all. Feel free to email us, call us. Our techs are always happy to help you out. Happy installing, and I will catch you.